Hello, I'm Grim Grindle and welcome to this video. Before I get underway, I want to say a few disclaimers. Firstly, I want to warn that I watched this movie at the midnight screening, went home, got two hours sleep, got up, went to work, got home again, and I'm now recording this right now. So if I seem to ramble a little bit or miss things that you consider to be important, it's probably because I'm currently running entirely on caffeine and holiday cheer. Which is also why you're probably going to see a lot of jump cuts, because instead of this being heavily rehearsed, I'm pretty much ad-libbing this and editing it on the fly. And secondly, it should be noted that this is not so much a review, but more of a first impression reaction sort of thing. I feel like that's a pretty important distinction, because on this channel a lot of work goes into our reviews. With a fair bit more research, we usually watch the movie at least twice, we take notes, we record it, we fix up audio, but really, this video only exists because I just watched Rogue One and had a few things I wanted to say about it. So, let's get started. But before I do, as it says in the title and flashing on the screen right now, there are spoilers in this video, lots of spoilers, a heck load of spoilers, so if you don't want spoilers, click away, and not to discourage people from watching my video, you really should watch Rogue One without having spoilers, because I did and I was far better for it. Okay, let's begin. Rogue One, a Star Wars story, is, as you no doubt know, the first of probably quite a few standalone Star Wars films, and it comes just before Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope. It is the story of how the Rebels get the Death Star plans that you see Darth Vader pursuing in Episode IV. This was pretty much the entirety of my knowledge for the film going into the movie, because I managed to avoid all trailers and spoilers, and I'm glad I did, because I was constantly pleasantly surprised. But firstly, the negative. I feel that Rogue One started off a little bit shaky, and the first act really stumbled and fumbled a fair bit. There were times when I was genuinely worried that the movie might not turn out to be fantastic. Luckily, these worries were quickly destroyed, because Act 2 picked up fantastically, and Act 3, if it was not flawless, it was damn close. So with that minor negative of the start of the movie is a bit slow and convoluted, let's get to the slew of positives, and there are a lot of them. To begin with, Governor Bloody Tarkin. Because Peter Cushing has been dead for about 20 years, I did not expect Tarkin, in Cushing's likeness, to be one of the main villains. But he was. He was a little bit uncanny valley to begin with, but your eyes quickly adjusted and got used to it, and it was just exciting to see him in the film, because, well, who would have bloody expected it? I have read a few comments saying that putting his likeness in the film was probably a little bit disrespectful to Peter Cushing, and, well, they may be right, but I'm glad they did, because canonically the movie wouldn't have really made sense if they hadn't done it. And Tarkins was not the only familiar face I was extremely happy to see in Rogue One. We also had Mon Mothma, who is actually played by a different actor who sounds, looks, and has the exact same mannerisms of the original one, so bang up job in that casting. And we had Bail Organa, who was the same actor from Episode 3. And quite possibly most exciting, we had Darth Vader. I suspected Darth Vader would be in it, but I didn't expect him to have such a good role. Firstly, we saw his return to the arrogant badass that he was in Episode 4, in a scene where he force chokes someone and makes the witty remark, let's hope you don't choke on your ambition. As well as these relatively significant cameos, we also got a few minor ones, like an appearance from R2-D2 and C-3PO, and also the guy who loses his arm and is wanted in several star systems, and his alien friend with the butt face, who appear in a quick scene. These two cameos were far from necessary, but gave me a quick smile. Moving on from character appearances, I want to briefly talk about the plot, which I have sort of summed up, but there was a rather important thing that I think was handled very well. A large part of the plot was that there was a purposeful design flaw in the Death Star that the Rebels were trying to learn about. I was very worried when this was originally mentioned, because I thought the design flaw would be the exhaust pipe, which is not exactly a design flaw, but is just part of engineering necessity. However, I was rather pleased to learn that the design flaw was actually that the core of the Death Star would go critical if struck, which means that the exhaust port was supposedly not a purposeful design flaw, which means that the debate rages on as to whether it was a good idea or not. I'm just glad that they didn't straight up end decades of nerdy debates about it. I also really enjoyed that they respected the canon universe and have brought in elements of the expanded universe that I believe have never actually been officially mentioned in a film. This includes Darth Vader's base of operations, which appeared to be on Mustafar, 
and also the existence of Kyber Crystals, which I think, despite being mentioned in the Clone Wars and possibly Star Wars Rebels and multiple books, was never actually mentioned in any of the films. So it was cool to see those make an appearance. And finally, I want to briefly talk about the final act, because, well, since I've said it was done near perfect, I should probably explain why. When Rogue One was first announced, there were several things that I said the film needed to do in order to actually be a successful movie. And, well, it actually did every single one of them. Firstly, and we're getting into major spoiler points here because we're talking about the end of the film, I wanted to see a Sith Lord slicing through non-Jedi soldiers. And we got it in the form of Darth Vader cutting down a bunch of rebels in one of the most brutal scenes I've seen in any Star Wars movie. Secondly, I said that none of the heroes of this movie should survive the film, because, well, we don't see them in the rest of the Star Wars original trilogy. And, well, if they're heroic enough to get the Death Star planned, you would think those heroes would play a larger role in the rest of Star Wars. And they indeed did not make it, getting the heroic deaths they deserved. The film managed to give us an attachment to these characters, and despite having only recently been introduced to them, I was sad to see every single one of them die. So, bang up job on that. And finally, I said the film should end with the Death Star plans being given to Tantive 4, Tantive 4 jumping away at the last minute, and then roll credits, which is pretty much exactly what happened. Sort of like Halo Reach leading into Halo Combat Evolved. However, this was done even better than I expected, because we even got to see a young Princess Leia. So essentially, this movie did perfectly everything I had hoped for, but it even did more than that because the last act of the film is an extremely long battle in space, air and ground between rebel forces and imperial forces. We see one of the coolest space battles in Star Wars history, some of the coolest dogfights in Star Wars history, and AT-ATs in action, which we've not seen since Hoth. This final act gave me chills several times, and as soon as the credits rolled, I wanted to go and watch A New Hope. So overall, they did a truly fantastic job. I highly recommend the film. I'm not sure where I would rate in a list of all the Star Wars films, I would have to watch it a few more times first, and I do in fact intend to do just that in the cinema. It's definitely a film worth seeing twice or three times on the big screen. And I think with that said, that's mostly what I had to say. So in closing, thanks for watching, I hope at least some of this was coherent, and if you enjoyed it, please let me know because I might do more videos of this style in the future. If you've already seen Rogue One, I'd be interested to hear what you have to say about it in the comment section. And until then, thanks for watching, I have been and still am Grim Grindle, and I'm off to take a nap. So, without any further ado, welcome to A Guide to Star Wars Canon in Chronological Order as of May 4th, 2016. Ever since the Star Wars Extended Universe was reset, the first point in the Star Wars chronology has become Star Wars Episode 1.